Welcome to the Raptor and the Butterfly. Am I getting picked up by the microphones? Yes. Right, cool. So, yeah, at Pearl 5 and Pearl 6, um, you know, uh, one, one, one we thought was going to be dead by now, the other, was still, the other we thought was going to be stillborn by now. Apparently they're both alive kicking and reasonably happy t so far. Um, so, I have plenty of Pearl 5 code at this stage. Um, but I have to admit, having been playing around with it for fun, I am actually quite liking Pearl 6. Um, the only thing that really annoyed me so far um, was the fact that the um, build sub method didn't do things the way that I was used to from Moose and required a lot more boilerplate to achieve the same thing. Um, so I moaned about it on IRC three times over the course of several months and somebody decided to add a feature called Tweak which works exactly the same way as the Moose one. I think mostly to get me to shut up, but I'm totally fine with that as a reason. Um, that, that was like the one thing I was missing from Moose. Um, there's a couple of other bits and pieces, but I think we can build those as extensions because, you know, it's a pearl. It can be bent. Um, the main thing, though, that really excites me about Pearl Sex is the grammar system because just, okay, I have... I wouldn't say I've written Pars Rec Descent. I've beaten my head against Pars Rec Descent. I have occasionally managed to tweak a Pars Rec Descent file and it not completely die. Um, but a lot of my um, attempts on writing parsers, all of the parser generators just ended up driving me insane. So I've generally ended up doing um, MGC style parsers that are just built out of regex and methods. Um, if you're curious about that approach and what I mean. There is a module called parser colon colon MGC that Leonard did that provides a bunch of sugar for building that style. Um, and that's really quite cool. But grammars, grammars are just, it's like, it, it, it's, it's a regex style parser generator that I can actually mostly understand how to work. This is a new and happy experience for me. Um, so I, th that to me is the killer feature of Pearl Sex. Cause like the OO is nice, but we have Moo, Moose, Type Tiny. Between those, it's not a killer feature for me, but the grammars definitely are. And I realized at some point I was gonna to want to be able to use grammars, but probably in systems tools, so I'm gonna want everything else to be Perl 5 because I already have a lot of Perl 5 code for systems tools. So, yeah. Um, advanced warning. Um, as always happens when you start wrangling toolchain and installation systems, everything went completely wrong, so there is not going to be that much Perl 6 code in here. Um, <coughs> on the other hand, there is the possibility of Perl 6 code later, and, well, you're going to see where I got and how. Um, and the, uh, the key word of this talk is very definitely lolsob. Um, <laughs> you will see why. Um, so, how do you get Perl 6? Um, distro packages, well, some distros are trying to package it at this point, but obviously, you know, if I'm gonna be using something, I'm gonna be bending it until it breaks, so I'm gonna want an up-to-date version because I'm going to need the bug fixes because I keep breaking things. This is like no fault of the software involved. It, it, it's just the nature of me playing with software, right? Um, so the first recommendation I was given was Rakuto Brew. Um, and Rakudo Brew does work. How many W's? Sorry? How many W's in Rakudo Brew? Yeah, that's uh, that's easier. An extra one, well done. Um, <laughs> Ow! <laughs> yeah, to, 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 be, to be entirely honest, um, from my experience of trying to use it, that extra W should have been an H, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but the, the thing is, it was built for car hackers who wanted to have multiple side-by-side -side installs. Um, and wanted to test different back ends and play around with stuff and that, 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 that's great. Works really well for that. Um, from my point of view on the other hand, this thing is a git clone spider baby. Because um, it clones all of the different repositories into its own directory. Builds from there, then it has a rehash thing that builds symlinks to somewhere else. Um, and then if you relocate it, it tends to kind of explode. And um, ba Basically, if you use it the way it was originally designed to be used, it's fine. But I'm me, so it didn't work quite so well for me. Um, does usually work fine, um, but when it when it doesn't, I I I, I am a lot lost in a in a mess of 
Lost in a maze of twisty git clones, and apparently my ability to sentence has been eaten by a groom. Never mind. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, new plan. Um, I already have sleep and minus. I know too much about Make Maker for my own sand score. Um, and so, clearly, the answer is given I actually like Make, the Abyss beckons. Let's alien it. <laughs> so, um, if you're interested in having a look, that directory, the URL will appear again later, but if you want to browse that and pull stuff down and stare at it as I go along, you're welcome to do so. Um, so, I want an alien Rakudo. Okay, so, um, the documented trick is pullconfigurepl gen nqp um, which builds more in NQP for you, which, yeah, that, that's really nice. But it installs them at configure.pl time. This is not how you build system. So, you lol, sob, what, what are you doing? I, I understand that it helps for people, but, like, when you're using a staged packaging system with a desk deal or whatever, this is not funny. Um, so, I harassed hashpearl 6 dev for, um, okay, what's the best approach that I can use that won't make downstream packages want to murder me? Um, and the conclusion was, we're going to need to have three desks. Um, so, an alien more VM, uh, alien, alien NQP on top of that, and then alien Rakudo. So, okay, alien base, neat set of tools for building alien disks. Works really well for a bunch of stuff. So, why am I not using it at all? Well, firstly, I like make. Secondly, I hate module build, and that's how alien base is built. Third, module build really does hate me back. Um, so if, if those don't apply, alien base is well worth a look. Um, like it, it, it's, it's one of those, I am not recommending against it to everybody else, just not me, please. Um, so, alien morbia. Um, so, you uh, make maker, you can inject your own make file fragments with the post sample method. Uh, so, set up the alien target. Um, the idea being that we're going to push uh, more VM into the um, site pearl tree or your local lev, and then we can find it later. So I have a more VM directory in the build, CDN, configure, set the prefix in the bin directory, and then you have an extra target that does an install with dest here. Um, and it should basically, uh, right. So the, you want to get everything into blib so that the pack list gets generated right. So hence, you create stuff under blib, take the alien ints directory that you just installed to, and then copy everything into blib, at which point, um, all you have to do is force it to be an architecture desk, and it basically just installs the way you wanted it to. So, except <coughs> it tried to install half of the alien ints directory into... The, the reason for this is MakeMaker doesn't specify the layout of your disk. You know, there's very old disks that have the .pm files in the disk root. Um, so it tried to be helpful and installed half the .pm files from elsewhere. Um, so the, the, the solution to this is you say to MakeMaker, no, just lib, leave me alone. And then my copy into blib fills out the rest of the files. Uh, and then, make install, you actually end up with Inside your local lab, more VM install, and inside install is a normal layer. Um, so, victory for that one. Alien NQP. Um, basically similar. Uh, ah, that's a... just a second. Yeah, sorry, the, the clock on there is still on British summertime. The clock on the phone is accurate, so I can use that to make sure I'm not running too slow. Um, so, configure.pl, give it a prefix. Tell it you only want to build the more backend. Uh, apparently, NQP has a JVM backend. Um, my opinion of this and my opinion of the JVM in general would be I'd rather not think about that, thank you. Um, if somebody else wants to attempt to copy my work and make it work on the JVM, please feel free to not ask me any questions at all because I have no clue. <laughs> um, but, and then it can't find more. Why can't it find more? I, I mean, like, the more binary is in dollar path, the more binary knows where all its shit is. It assumes that more is in the same prefix that you're installing NQP to. 
because of, of, of apparently having multiple prefixes for software installation is new and orange. Um, so I, I, I sort of stare at this for a bit and just, really? Um, so I mean, b believe me, um, what you want to have more than one prefix is going to be a running theme. Um, so what do we do? We do prefix x with alien target, backends equals more, with more, tell it where the more VM is, run make. <laughs> Because the thing is, even though I told it where the more was, it used its own bin deer in the make file and ignored it anyway and went back to looking in prefix. Uh, I think it was around this point that um, I, poured a, I poured a shot of vodka into my coffee and tried sim linking it. Um, but that turned out to be even more horrible. Uh, several vodkas later, I've forgotten why, and I don't want to remember. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah. override the make variable. Screw it, it'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> and it blows up again. So, th there is a directory called shareMQP libmass. Um, don't ask me what that is. All I know is it exists, but in spite of having MQP in the name, part of it comes from more. Guess where it's looking for those files? Yeah. <laughs> so, what you have to do is, you load Alien More VM, you find the install root by um, substituting on the, on the um, percent inc entry, and then, in your post amble, you substitute a static thing for the root you just calculated, and in there, do a substitution of edX on the make file first. Um, at which point, um, you also have to um, basically go through the bin directories, because basically NQP is a shell script that calls more with a bunch of options, except it's calling it in the wrong path, because same thing. Um, so you do the substitution on the files as well, before they get copied into BLIM, and that actually works! So, two out of three. Excellent. <laughs> I am ready. No, I'm really not. Um, Alien Rikudo, because this will be easy now, right? Doesn't even have a with more option. There is no way to tell it at all. It just looks at the prefix. Ah! So, patch NQP's configure system. That, 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 what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, you know, I, I actually have to patch something this time rather than just regexing it after the fact. Um, because, you know, try, trying to refactor pull with regex, okay, I, I can do it, but let's not. Um, so, yeah, screw it. Let's just use which, because I've got the dollar path set up. It's not my fault you're ignoring the dollar path. So stick that in instead of um, its original stupid ass check prefix and then flail version. Um, Configure.pl now runs. So I check the make file. And it still put more in prefix in the make file. <laughs> All right, so we can deal with this. Um, so the make, <laughs> make file is generated from make file hyphen more not in. Now there is a make var variable for this. There is a variable for its substitution system. It just doesn't use it. Um, so we can add more prefix than NQP prefix, right? Configure.pl can populate that. Um, so you do more pref equals at more colon colon prefix. That gets substituted into the make file. Uh, is there anything for NQP? Uh, no. So we'll just pass that at make time. It'll be fine. Um, so you tweak everything to use those prefixes. Um, so you need to change from prefix to more prefix in various places. Um, and then make NQP prefix equals and kaboom. Not quite an earth shattering kaboom, but still kaboom. So, um, there is this thing called mlibpath, which is the library path for Morvia. Um, and it assumes that more and NQP are both in the same tree. Which they're not, because multiple prefixes! So, uh, this comment turns out to be a lie. Shortly after I gave this talk at YEPCEU, um, one of the um, 
more like useful level six contributors, um, and implying me being the useless one, clearly. Um, one of them um, came up and went, surprise, actually, builds with spaces in were already broken, your comment is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> clearly that made me feel so much more encouraged about the process of patching these back upstream. Anyway, uh, <coughs> so, <coughs> Set the MLM path to both paths with a, with a space in the middle. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, however, recruiters make tests, no passes. Excellent, we're getting somewhere. I'm sure we're getting somewhere. Please let us be getting somewhere. <laughs> uh, so, right, a little bit of background. Um, French Pearl Workshop a few years ago. Um, I was over there to um, give a couple of talks. Um, right at the end, they'd had one sponsor who hadn't come through, so they had um, a gap for covering expenses. It was only like a couple of hundred euros, but it, it was the thing of being as it's a tiny workshop run by one person, the money was basically going to come out of his pocket if, he, if they couldn't figure out a solution. Um, so at the auction, I went, right, screw it. One hour of me doing stuff with Pearl 6 to help out the Pearl 6 team for every X number of euros that you, don't, that you donate to the conference. Um, and uh, uh, of course... <laughs> <laughs> um, and then once they put a chunk in, four or five other people went, actually this will be hilarious and threw some money at, at it as well. And the conference ended up with its expenses covered and I think maybe 150 euros to pass on to the next year's organiser. So, victory, <coughs> except for the fact that my various attempts at doing useful things all got stuck on various things. Um, mostly, actually, that trying to do build system hackery on Parrot made this look like really good fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then it took me a while to come around to getting back to it. Um, but, you know, conference fixed, um, and this is basically me finally paying my debt to this. Um, Obviously, the fact that grammars are awesome totally motivated me to do it, so I'm not sure I can entirely claim it, but close enough. Um, so, yeah, okay, back to the code mines. Um, so, I've, I've, I've done all this. Run Pulse sex. <laughs> what? What? What has just happened? I just... You, but you, so... The reason is, it tries blib slash rel relative to the current directory. Les? What? Somebody should probably fix that in Rikudo because it probably has the same attack as using lib dot in it. Probably. Yeah. Patch is accepted. <laughs> All right, you can wait for the CVE then because I'll totally forget again, which is why I'm reminding you now. I suck, I know. Anyway, um, so it tries blib first. Um, which means it works in the build directory, and then it works in the more prefix. It's the same problem before, except backwards. And therefore. <laughs> uh, um, so I'm, uh, at, the, at, the, at this point, I, I, I have just stopped caring. We will just hack this, it will be fine. So, basically, you reach into the .nqp file that compiles into Rikudo's module loader and just run a substitution regex on that. Um, to uh, basically, looks for the, um, change, yeah, changes it from um, doing that to, yeah. I don't even remember how half of this works. This thing is insane. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no yeah. Takes braces. Yes, because it's it's the first chunk is because it just hard codes. Take the back end config prefix, which is the more prefix, and then string can cap the share NQP thing, uh, and then you just replace it with the installation lib path, which came from the Rikudo make file, because at least it wrote that one with the right prefix, um, and then. The reason for the double dollars is this is inside a make fragment, um, but my, my fragment of the day still has to be the quote. 
Because <laughs> um, what, 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 what you're doing there is, I needed single cloak. Oh, no, no, sorry. You, you, why can I never remember how my own hacks work? Um, no, because th this is shell. Double cloak, single cloak, double cloak, single cloak. Um, and basically, that brings you back round to having a single quote in the middle. Oh, I don't even care. Moving on. <laughs> um, I swear I remembered how this worked half an hour ago when I went through the slides. Never mind. Uh, no, I'm annoyed about this now. This is, this is basic shell quoting. Oh, hang on. No, it's because it's inside a single quoted string. So what you're doing is, I needed a double quote. So... Yeah, I need no, you need to sing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm remembering it now. Excellent. So, so, the, so what happens is, what I actually want inside the file is double quote, single quote, double quote, so I've got a single quote to use in the regex. So the double quote starts the double quote. The single quote ends the single quote of the minus A. The single quote in the pair of double quotes in the middle produces a single quote. And then the next single quote restarts the minus E and you have the double quote to terminate the string. You need the chirp bracket. And you chirp bracket bracket with a number. Backslash X22 even. Or that. 27. And that's why I didn't do it that way. Because I can't remember either. At least I can reverse engineer this one eventually. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so um, at this point, we actually have a Perl 6 binary that runs. Ooh. Sweet. OK. So now, get, get nines in line Perl 5, Perl 6 configure.pl6, and make install. Yeah. So what's gone wrong this time? Compunit repository registry.pm, which is, a, remember we had trouble with the low level MQP loader? This is the high level Perl 6 loader. And it checks for an environment variable, and then it looks in the box. <laughs> Stop! Stop it! Why are you doing this to me? I, I've run out of the ability to cry at this point, and the vodka bottle's looking disturbingly empty. Uh, so what do we do? Well, pull minus pi minus e time again. <laughs> and just basically go, screw this. OK, I've broken the environment variable. I don't care anymore. Um, and you basically, because the um, Perl 6 is actually a shell script that invokes more with the appropriate options. Well, it, appro it invokes NQP, which then invokes more. Um, on the upside, so we just stuff an export on the front to get it to find the right thing, because I don't want to patch another file in Recuda. Um, and that works. So at that point, we have an alien Recuda dist with inline Perl 5 installed and the ability to do Perl 6 and then do use inline Perl 5 and that pulls your Perl 5 stuff. Excellent. Now, however, we need to get it to work the other way around. Oh, yeah. Um, that option is on in almost all distros. If you use Perl hyphen build or Perl brew, it doesn't get set by default. <coughs> the inline Perl 5 documentation totally warned me about this, but it warned me about it at the bottom, so I completely missed it because I'm a Muppet. Um, I believe Nine patched it to make the warning more obvious in case the next person to have this problem is as stupid as I am. Anyway, um, so inline Perl 6, this is the next step we need, right? Um, so, we already know what we're going to have to do here, right? <laughs> so, grab all three prefaces into a, into a hash by doing the um, percent ink trick. I probably should actually add a method to call that provides the thing so it's more encapsulated. But, like, I control all three of these disks and I don't care right now. <coughs> um, and it's basically easy from there, he says. So, uh, where was I? Um, yeah, yeah. so the, the inline Perl 6 one was basically tweak a couple of defines. It actually had a generated .h file. 
you generate a slightly different .h file, patch the source to use the three prefixes, and it really, it's same old, same old, lol sob, but we're done. Um, so at that point, we can do, oh, and I missed the six off there, never mind. Inline Perl 6, I only knew that should be. Um, and it actually runs Perl 6 code. So um, Perl 6 startup can be a little bit slow. Not, not the mainline interpreter startup, but if you're loading a module that it doesn't already have a pre-comp file for, basically it caches a sort of a dot, it's not a dot PNC like thing, it's more like an octree file. Or blah, 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 blah. Hand wave, hand wave, I don't know the internals well enough to explain this properly. Uh, but basically, once it's compiled something once, it writes a pre-comp file and uses that the next time, which makes startup a lot quicker. But obviously, if you're currently hacking on a piece of code, you've just edited the file, so it can't use the pre-compiled version, so your startup times and module loading can take a little bit of time. Um, if, if, you're, if you're using Moose on a regular basis, you probably have a fast enough system to not notice this. Um, <laughs> but it was annoying me anyway. Um, and the other thing is, inline Perl 5 requires 518. Um, and given I'm wanting to experiment here, I don't really want to say to people, so, before you do anything else, you know this thing that I've made to make Perl 6 really trivial to install? It's only trivial if you build a complete pearl of your own first. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, but then they'd have to install all of their other modules to the, uh, to the extra pearl and, 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 no. Um, so I had a slightly interesting idea. And I wrote a thing called sixserve.pl, which loads inline Perl 6 and the object remote internals. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with object remote, it basically allows you to SSH into a file system with only Perl installed, and then create objects and call code on there. Um, very useful for building agentless um, provisioning systems and stuff. Um, it basically does on-demand fat packer to ship all the dependencies over the wire as well. So you can pretend that anything that's installed locally is on the other end. Um, so I thought I'd reuse this machinery, because why not? Can that handle XS? No, <laughs> neither can Fatpacker. <laughs> the entire reason for writing Fatpacker was I realized that if I went, screw this, you're not getting non-core access, I could make something that was useful without it accidentally turning into par. I, seriously, that, 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 way, that way lies more madness than even I want to deal with. Um, and also, you, you may have noticed, because I'm, I'm fairly sure you helped with a bit of it, um, quite a lot of distros on CPAN that are low-level dependencies for things like Moo magically acquired um, pure Perl and XS split distributions over the past five years or so. The, this, this might have been me paving the way for not having to care about not having XS. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you do that. Um, do an accept on the socket. Set up file descriptors, run the object remote node. So you start 6 bound to a Unix socket. And then, object remote as the new constructor called new colon colon on. And I tell it to do new colon colon on. And what it does is connects to 6 over a Unix socket, instantiates a Perl 6 VM inside 6 and then the Perl 5 code here, when it calls a method, serializes the arguments to JSON, sends them over the wire, and gets the response back. Um, even cooler than that, if I run it, on, if I run it um, on a TCP socket, set up a port forward, and then on the other box, I can connect back SSH tunnel through to a TCP socket to the Perl 6 server, at which point, you install 518 in Alien Recudo once on a master host, and you can play with using fragments of Perl 6 from scripts that you're running anywhere on your infrastructure without having to install anything clever anywhere else. Um, which I figured was a good way of basically being able to play around without asking your sysadmin for things that might get you lynched. Um, so yeah, um, so th th this combination works out really nicely. I, I have some ideas about um, <coughs> making six uh, preload a shitload of modules for you as well. 
Um, so it spent a while starting up. The current thing is only single connection because it's basically demoware. Um, but a proper one that forks per connection, but preloads per six modules in the master, should give you very nice startup time. And also at that point, you can basically connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect, and with a couple of other bits and pieces, I think we may be able to get basically a Perl 6 environment that already has a fully preloaded Rakudo, because you don't run into the potential problems of forking inside a threading system, because the threading system isn't currently running its Perl 5 doing the control code. And then in the child process, we enter into Rakudo and give Rakudo complete control of everything. And I think that might be interesting in terms of getting faster restarts. Ask me later when I've tried it properly. Because, you know, this process went so well today. Um, but anyway, so um, I do need to polish the disks a bit before uploading. I was hoping to get that done between EU and now. Um, but a combination of I suck and life happened. Um, my, my, my last attempt to upload an inline Rikudo, an alien Rikudo some time ago really confused pause in that um, it attempted to index um, any Perl 6 modules in the disk <laughs> that I had Perl 5 permissions for. And I have permissions for quite a few reasonably common names. Um, <laughs> it especially didn't help that I have a pumpkin bit on pause from when I shipped, from when I shipped to bleed release. So, like, pod simple on Meta Cpan was going to Alien Rakudo instead of Perl. <laughs> Deleted that or pause, all gone, fine. Need to be more careful this time. Haven't had time to be sufficiently careful to hit the button. Because um, I'd really <laughs> rather not do that again, if you don't mind. Um, it was only funny once. But this does all work. Um, the, next set, the next steps, well, okay, step zero currently is stop sucking and actually get on with this. But once I do, um, tweak it up and see pan what I have currently then um, this stuff is very amenable to being able to script updating the versions of Rakudo more and NQP in it. Um, my eventual goal there is to have it simple enough. Uh, there's a bot um, called Reles Sixer. It, it's basically releaser with a six in the middle and terrible spelling. Um, but that now cuts things like Rakudo releases um, on an automated basis. So what I want to do is get the generation of the alien disks into that, so any time a Rakudo release is cut, an alien Rakudo release goes up onto CPAN at the same time. Um, also because that way I don't have to do any work and it stays up to date, um, which would be nice. Um, and also I need to go through and actually fix the make files properly so I can remove most of these hacks. That's also going to require a little bit of care because then I'm not just affecting users of my alien disks, I'm potentially affecting users of the actual Rakudo disks. So we'll need to be a little bit careful. It will probably take a while of basically make a couple of tweaks, wait a month to make sure I didn't screw anything up. Make a, yeah, and, but we'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, Perl, Perl 6 people, have, several Perl 6 centric people have totally volunteered to help me with this. Um, hence, step zero being I need to stop sucking. Um, but if you want to play in the meantime, um, if you grab sixserve.tgz, that has everything in it. Unpack it, install OPAN, which is um, basic, basically OPAN is, I got annoyed with how heavyweight Pinto was and wrote a CPAN minus ver style version of it. Um, so you run that to install the dependencies, um, and then Perl 6 and inline Perl 6 should just work at that point. Plus, um, there's scripts in there once you've got object remote that will just work. Um, so, yeah, that URL to play with my crazy stuff, that URL for the source repository of Nine's crazy stuff, without which this would not have been possible. <coughs> um, I theoretically have ten minutes left. But I'd happily run out of slides, so thank you very much. And since we do have 10 minutes, 
If anybody has a question other than why, um, you're welcome to ask. <laughs> no? Okay. Cool. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, here's one. Did you actually have a chance to play with Guanamos in 4-5? Or did you just get so stuck in the you mean, you mean Damien's regex grammars? No, I mean inline Paul sexing. Not yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did file quite a few bugs against the grammar documentation, though. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I've experimented it with it a little bit, but the grammar stuff, I completely get. The way that relates to the action stuff, hmm. there, is no, there, is no, there is no proper tutorial for that part. Um, I suspect if, you, if you've already played around with enough Pearl 6 stuff, it's completely obvious. Uh, but trying to start there has, has proven a little bit confusing. The issue with that is it's really so simple that no one knows what action to document. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same problem and uh, I've looked around for example of how to use this until I discovered you don't have to know anything. You just give it an um, object and the, uh, it's the object has methods and the methods then correspond to your tokens in the grammar and they get called. Yeah, it, it, was, it, it was the relationship between dollar slash and dot made and the. I, I, I think I think. It can literally be explained in two or three lines. Go on. Then. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if you figure out where to add those three lines to the docs, I'll read them and see if it unconfuses me. Um, other, otherwise, I can totally recommend crying on the uh, Pearl Six IRC channel on Freenode. Um, they're, they're, they're really quite responsive to that. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, well, in that case. Quick uh, of, um, as soon as I got connectivity again with the whole team lib and looking in the local path thing, you'll be gone because it turns out you didn't need to. Excellent! my point of view, I think 514 would be quite sufficient. Yeah. Uh, but if you can get as far as 510, fuck yeah, you know. <laughs> what, what did you need 518 for in the first place? Uh, the V6 colon colon inline package. Um, for all um, 516 and below stumble over this because they, they tried to park it as a version. Oh yeah, d double quote v begin double quote v six colon colon inline arrow import would work fine, right? Yeah. And you know that that's that's beautiful, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> this is why we upgrade Perl every year, so we have to roll back to five dot ten to do to do new advances. Can it be Why not? There's, a, there's a reason why they have <laughs> <laughs> Since when has that ever stopped any of them? Especially you, Matt. Actually, why, why not just, because you've, you've, already, you've already got the inline Perl 6 name space, why not just do use inline colon colon Perl 6 space dash inline arrow end or something, you know? Yeah, I, I added the V6 inline package before writing. It's, it's 
really part of inland flow five. But now that I have inland flow six, yeah, I'm here for six. Yeah. And that there's, there's no reason they can't basically do that. I still like very much that it's uh, kind of close to what the original spec for V6 uh, suggested, which is just use V6 mm. and have V6 code, and then use V5 to get back into V5. So still try to get closer to this idea. Yeah. Um. Tell you what you could do. No, you, 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 could, you could release another, you, you could have um, inline pull set um, provide um, a pull.pm namespace mm -hmm. with a special version method oh. so that if you do use space pull space v6, it will call oh. the pull colon colon version <laughs> method <laughs> with v6 and you can detect that. <laughs> we already have a solution for this. In the pull, pull five space, um, we have the top level name Perl six, and there are a bunch of modules under that on CPAN, and that would be the logical place to put this sort of stuff in the Perl five world. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, cause you, so you're, you you use, use inline Perl six for going one direction, and use Perl six inline for going the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> And nobody will ever get confused by that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's easy. Depending on which way you're going, you need to write the two parts of the namespace the other way around. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Don't lean them on it. 